In this video, you'll learn how to build an all sky cam like the one shown in our last video. If you just want to learn how to use our camera and how you can view images from it, then check the description for the link to the previous video. But if you're interested in building your own all sky cam, then keep watching. The VBS All Sky Camera is based on the popular Instructables build from Thomas Jacklin, a builder in Canada's Yukon Territory. Our camera uses the same software, but has some customizations to the enclosure so it will work better with the weather conditions at the VBAS. The parts used for our build include a Raspberry Pi with 64GB memory card, a ZWO ASI 178 monochrome camera with a fisheye lens, a simple weatherproof case bought on Amazon, and an acrylic dome with a 3 inch diameter also bought on Amazon. Before building the enclosure, we made sure we could get the software running. To do this, all we needed was the Raspberry Pi and the camera. We installed the Raspberry Pi operating system on the 64GB SD card, as shown here. Once it was inserted into the Pi and then powered on, we were able to log into it with a VNC client. From here, we're ready to install the AllSky software, which is open source and hosted on GitHub. You can find a link to this GitHub repo in the description. We cloned the repository onto the Raspberry Pi, which took a few minutes. After it finished cloning, we ran the install script from the root directory of the repo. The install script automatically detects the ZWO camera, and then prompts for several options that allow it to configure the Pi and the AllSky software to run most efficiently. We're just accepting the defaults for the most part. The whole process will take several minutes. The installer also prompts for the GPS coordinates of the location the camera will be stationed. Then, when the install is done, the management interface will automatically start up. We can access the management interface by opening a browser and pointing it to the host name of the Raspberry Pi, which we set up during the install. It will prompt for a username and password, which are just the defaults specified in documentation. The management interface allows you to configure the parameters used when taking images and other options like where to store the image files. The first time we open this, we will have to accept a few configuration options, click the save button, and then restart the software. When it starts up again, the camera will begin taking images. The system is fully operational. Now we're ready to build the enclosure and install the camera. First, we installed in a stand to mount the camera inside the enclosure and place the camera on the stand so that we could measure where it would be. Next, we used a hole saw to drill out a hole for the camera to see through the lid of the enclosure. After some fine tuning with the Dremel, we're ready to attach the acrylic dome. It's mounted to the top of the enclosure with six screws, which we drilled pilot holes for. Before permanently attaching the dome, we painted the area under it with black anti-reflective paint to minimize glare. Then we can finally screw down the dome. From here on, we use bubble wrap to protect the dome from scratches. Now we're ready to install the Raspberry Pi. For this, we simply use Velcro strips, which made it easy to get the Pi in and out when we needed to. We also attached two fans to cool the Pi and the camera, and provide airflow through the dome, which reduced moisture. Finally, we applied some all-purpose clear sealant around the dome to make it waterproof. And that's it! We're done, and the camera is ready to use! During the first few weeks of operation, there were some issues. We had to troubleshoot several problems to get the AllSky cam into its current working condition. These problems included heat. Our first photo of the enclosure had the camera exposed to the sun, and during the summer months, it really started cooking. The camera's metal case became so hot that it would burn your hand if you touched it, and we worried about it melting some of the plastic or destroying the Raspberry Pi. For that reason, we redesigned the case so that the camera can sit inside of it, out of direct sunlight, and get better airflow around the body. Moisture. We didn't have any trouble with dew on the outside of the acrylic dome because the heat of the camera and the Raspberry Pi act as a dew heater. But we did have some issues with moisture building up inside the dome. The problem was that there was no airflow, so any moisture that made its way into the enclosure had nowhere to go. To help with this, we added two fans inside the enclosure, and a breather value on the top. You'll still see the occasional water droplets on the inside of the dome, but they usually dry up within 24 hours. Storage. We ran out of disk space. 64 gigabytes was not enough to store more than a couple of days of data, so we updated the software to upload our images to the cloud and an Amazon S3. That allows us to access it from anywhere. And ladybugs. No matter how hard we tried, hundreds of ladybugs managed to nest inside the enclosure, and even made their way into the dome. We think they like the heat given off by the pie. We've tried sealing off all holes in the enclosure, but we may just have to live with this problem. One of the customizations we made to the software configuration was to store the camera's images in the cloud. That allows us to also run our website in the cloud. We used Heroku for this, and we pointed it at our camera's images, configured a few of the settings, and added a clear sky weather chart. 
Now those images can be viewed by our members and visitors anytime they like. For more information on how to use the camera, see our earlier video. And when you get a chance, please like and subscribe to this channel.